Welcome to the Wheatley Theatre Company's production of The Drowsy Chaperone. Please silence all electronic devices and enjoy the show. I hate theater. It's just... You know what I do when I'm sitting in a darkened theater waiting for the curtain to rise? I pray. Dear Lord, please let it be a good show. And please, for the love of God, keep it short. Three hours is fine, four hours is too much. And for the love of God, keep the actors out of the audience. I didn't pay $400 to have the fourth wall come crashing down around my ears. I just want a few good songs and a story that will take me away. I just want to be entertained. I mean, isn't that the point? Amen. You know, there was a time when people sat in darkened theaters and thought to themselves, what have George and Ira Gershwin got for us this evening? Or, can Cole Porter pull it off again? Can you imagine? Now it's, oh, Elton John, must we continue the charade? <laughs> it used to be, sitting in that theater, you knew that when the curtain rose, you'd be taken to another world, a world full of music and glamour. And you thought to yourself, my God, what are they going to bring up? The lights! <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are we doing? You know, I'm feeling a little blue myself. A little anxious for no particular reason. A little sad that I should feel anxious at this age. A little self-conscious anxiety resulting in a non-specific sadness, a state that I call blue. And whatever I'm feeling this way, blue, I like to listen to my music. So I was going through my records today, yes, records, <laughs> and I was about to put on the 1962 soundtrack to Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. I had a craving for a young Ronnie Howard. But then I said, no, let's have a treat. Let's disappear for a while into the decadent world of the 1920s, where champagne flowed while caviar chilled, and all the world was a party, for the wealthy anyway. So I was going through my records, and what did I find but one of my favorite shows, The Drowsy Chaperone. <laughs> Remember? Music by Julie Gable and lyrics by Sidney Stein. It's a two-record set remastered from the original made in 1928. It even has the original cast, including Beatrice Stockwell as the chaperone. <laughs> Don't you just love her? This is a full 15 years before she became Dame Beatrice Stockwell. Isn't she just elegant? I'll read to you what it says on the back. It says, mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Well, the phrase gay wedding has a much different meaning now, but <laughs> back then it just meant fun. And that's what this show is, fun. So would you indulge me? Would you let me play this record for you? Yes. I was hoping you'd say yes. Uh, you hear that static? To me, that's the sound of a time machine starting up. All right, now let's visualize. It's 1928, and you've just arrived at the doors of the Morosco Theater in New York City. It's November, it's very cold. Remember when it used to be cold in November? Not anymore, November's the new August. It's global warming, we're all doomed. Anyway, there's a heavy gray sleet falling from the sky, but you don't care because you're going to see a Broadway show. Listen. 
helps if you close your eyes. Isn't it just wonderful? Ah, overtures. Overtures are out of style now. I miss them. It's the show's way of welcoming you. Hello, welcome. The meal will be served shortly, but in the meantime, would you like an appetizer? That's what an overture is. A poo-poo platter of tunes, if you will. <laughs> Something new. Kind of rollicking. Maybe a dance number involving pirates. Don't worry, there are no pirates. All right, now this is it. When the music starts to build, and you know you're only seconds away from being transported. The curtain's going up. I can't wait. Yes, madam. Oh, how do I look? <laughs> you look radiant, Mrs. Hondell. Oh, I do love this dress. It never goes out of style. It's a miracle, madam. My dress, my dress, my fancy dress. I don't know why I'm wearing it, I must confess. My dress, my dress, oh, I love my dress. Would someone tell me why I put it on? Yes, yes, your dress, your fancy dress. It was such a pleasure airing it, restitching and repairing it. God bless your dress, it's one fine dress. And I will tell you why you put it on. Wedding bell will ring, wedding bell will chime. Madam, you're the hostess and it's happy wedding time. Wedding, wedding bells, bells will ding. Wedding bells will dong, wedding bells will ding, a ling, and we will ding along. Just your dress, your fancy dress, we're very, very glad you put it on. Wedding guests have come, wedding guests are here, wedding guests are at the door and soon they will appear. I'm Robert, the bridegroom, I'm here to marry Janet, the star of Felsic's Follies, whom I love a lot. George, that's George, his best man, George. I'm honored to be doing what a best man ought. Ah, Mrs. Tottendale, now don't you worry, this whole one is gonna run like clockwork. You see, the key is organization. Each string represents a task yet to be completed. Book the minister, yell the band, pay the floors. This whole wedding's gonna run like clockwork. <gasps> oh, is there going to be a wedding? I'm Feltic, producer. I lost my leading lady. I gotta stop this wedding or I ain't what squat. I'm Katie, just Katie. I came with Mr. Feltic. I'll be a leading lady. I get my shot! We're pastry chefs, we're pastry chefs, we cross our hearts, we're pastry chefs, no bakery, a bakery is what we got! Adolfo, Adolfo, my name it is Adolfo, I am the king of Roman, so I kiss a lot! You are the king of Roman, so you kiss a lot! Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime, Wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. Someone hasn't come. Someone isn't here. Where is Janet Van the Rat and when will she appear? It's Janet, it's Janet, it's Janet Van der Rat. The nuts. Am I late? I'm the chaperone. Sh 
chaperone of Janet Vandergraaf, maid of honor, friend and confidant, and all that rut. Where's the bar? A wedding, a wedding to raise prohibition, madam. A wedding, a wedding, how gay. Good thing I brought my own. A wedding, a wedding to raise. Champagne makes me drowsy. It's really happening. Truly happening. Almost happening. What is happening? Da 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 da. Tricks, the aviatrix, queen of the sky. All the characters have been introduced. We have a bride who's giving up the stage for her love, a debonair bridegroom, a Harry producer, the jovial gangsters posing as pastry chefs, a Latin loviera, a flaky corine, and an aviatrix. And of course, my favorite character, the drowsy chaperone. What more do you need from an evening's entertainment? Wonderful. And we will ding a ling along. I don't even know what that means. Anyway, I'll try to guide you through this record as best as I can. Don't worry, it won't be hard to follow. So we begin with a welcome from the love struck groom. Well, I just want to say thank you all for coming. I tell you, I must be one lucky fellow. Who would have thought that I, Robert Martin, would be marrying such a glamorous showgirl, and that that glamorous showgirl would be giving up a successful career for me, Robert Martin? Ah, uh, uh, if it weren't for prohibition, I'd say, uh, let's raise a glass. Here, here. To Janet Vandegraaff, the most beautiful girl in the world. Absolutely not. <gasps> Excuse me. The groom mustn't see his bride on the day of the wedding. It's bad luck. I hope you got that, because that's essentially the plot. Hang on for the ride. Breakfast will be served in the Arabian room. Oh. <laughs> Say, isn't it a little early in the day to be drinking? I don't understand the question. Look, chaperone, you keep Janet away from Robert. That's your only job. Aye, aye, mon capitaine. Oh, Robert, who's my little monkey? I am. <laughs> I'm your little monkey. <laughs> no. So the bride and groom are whisked away, and we turn our attention to the B-plot, which involves the producer. Mr. Meltic! Leaving show business and getting married? Mr. Meltic! Doesn't she know I got obligations? Mr. Meltic, I could be your leading lady. You said it yourself. I'm useless and a chorus. Kitty. For the last time. You don't got what it takes. But I've been taking lessons, singing, acting, ballet. Ballet. Yeah, I'm pretty good too. Last week I auditioned for Swanee Lake. A little annotation, Kitty and Feltzik were actually a couple in real life, Jack and Sadie Adler. Now this is actually a very familiar comic construct, a stupid woman and her long-suffering companion. Well, she appears stupid, but in the end she does something very clever, which makes everyone wonder if it's all just an act. The irony in that statement is that Sadie was actually quite dumb. Apparently Jack had to explain all the jokes to her. She had a wonderful career on stage though. Back then it was the only place where stupid people could earn a decent living. This was before television, of course. Kitty, I don't got time for this, and it's Swan Lake. 
A petite four, Mr. Feltzik? Not now. Perhaps a nice profiterole. I'm not hungry. Then perhaps we can offer you something else to chew on. Yeah, something that ain't food. What? Your confusion is to be expected. Although we stand here before you in the guise of innocent pastry chefs, we are also... And primarily... Employees of a certain individual. A certain individual? A certain individual. Who happens to be the single largest investor in Feldick's Follies. He sent us here as pastry chef to express his concern about Miss Vandergraaf's impending nuptials. Specifically, that if Miss Vandergraaf gets married and leaves the show, then, then there ain't, ain't no, no show. Say, don't I know you? <laughs> no, you don't. Have you ever spent any time in Toledo? Have you ever spent any time in a coma? <laughs> no, but I got cousin Seattle. Boys, I can ensure you this wedding is never gonna happen. You got my word. Oh, we'll take your word, all right. But to go back on that word... Would be a recipe for disaster. Yeah, like making a shortbread too long. <laughs> now, we hope we made ourselves perfectly eclair. One can only hope. You just gotta be kidding me. Uh, a trifle much? Don't tart with me. Okay, can we drop the pastry chef routine, eh? Alas, we ganache. We're on the lamb. Lamb's an entree, you macaroon. <laughs> The gangsters were played by the interchangeable vaudeville group, the Tall Brothers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John Tall. Their original last name was Moskowitz, but they were renamed at Ellis Island by a sarcastic immigration official. They represent an early example of the typical Broadway gangster, full of wordplay and stylized movements, but really not that very intimidating. Unless you find dancers intimidating, which I do, but not for the reasons that would be appropriate for this situation. Now, we'll leave the matter in your hands, Mr. Feltzik. But in the meantime, feel free to browse the dessert carousel. Yeah, try the Toledo surprise. It's to die for. <laughs> You think so? Go patty your face, Kitty. I gotta stop this wedding, but how? Lord in heaven, how? I always thought that moment was a little overplayed. <laughs> so with the story well on its way, let's go to the groom's room. They're handsome, now show me those pearly whites. The groom was played by the dashing Percy Hyman. He was the Albright toothpaste man. His fabulous smile adorned every tube. Albright was hugely popular in the early 20s. That's because it had cocaine in it. <laughs> it's true. There's the fifth ingredient down on the label right after sugar. Anyway, it wasn't long before he became a huge matinee idol. Now don't you worry, it's perfectly normal for a groom to be nervous on his wedding day. It is? Of course it is. Some people say Percy Hyman acts like a toothpaste model, but to those people I say, SHUT UP! <laughs> hey there, Mr. Mirror Man, shaking and a quaking. Trembling like them Freddy cats do Something big be bothering you Cold feet, cold feet Brother, you got cold feet You can make them cold feet hot With a little rhythm Young feet, old feet can be uncontrolled feet You can make them cold feet Trot down the aisle Frosty arches They can learn to swing Icy toes can jive Wedding marches Played in ragtime swing Make frigid souls come alive then take that time. Gold feet, small feet, turn them into bold feet. Read them, make them cold feet. Hot 
You don't say. Well, why don't you crawl back into your mud hole, you greasy backstepping worm? Great, now I have to find a new minister. Say, what are you up to? I'm uh, singing a song an old street punk taught me. A Dixie remedy for wedding day jitters. You've got jitters. You've got the easy part. I still gotta buy rice, get the minister, and book the nears. I've got the weight of the wedding on my shoulders. George, it sounds like you've got cold feet. What do I got? Cold feet. What do I want? Bold feet. What do I do? Bold feet? No! You make the cold feet hot. Five, six, seven, eight, cold feet, cold feet, turn them into bold feet, rhythm, make them cold feet, hot. You make the cold feet hot. You make the cold feet hot. Cold feet hot. I love Chrissy Hyman. You know, sometimes I like to think of him panting and sweating after a long dance routine. <sighs> oh. He's still alive, you know. He was recently on the news celebrating his 100th birthday. To say that the passing years hadn't taken their toll on him would be a grotesque understatement. They wheeled him out and he had this pained, wide-eyed confusion that God reserves for the very, very old on their birthdays. You know the one that says, Who are you? Who am I? Why is this cake on fire? You know what I'm talking about? Anyway. Well, enough of that dancing around like a fool. <sighs> Sorry, George. I'm just tr ca trying to calm my nerves. It's my wedding day, after all. Well, you could have snapped an angle. Tap dancing's way too dangerous. Why don't you go out for a skate instead? That's what I would do when I want to blow off some steam. George, what would I do without you? <laughs> what was I thinking? You can't go out like that. You might see Janet. Here, put on this blindfold. Oh, George, why you think of everything? Just looking out for you, my boy. Wedding bells will ring. Wedding bells will chime. Wedding bells will celebrate. Just ignore it. It does this occasionally. It rings. It will stop soon. What? What do you want? Hello. You have reached my answering machine. Leave a short message after the tone, and I'll call you back at my convenience. And I am very likely in, 
so you do not interpret this as an invitation to burgle. There you go. The moment's ruined. Thank you. Thank you, life. It's like a cell phone going off in a theater. God, I hate that. Oh, hey, what are you up to right now? Oh, I'm just at the theater, ruining the moment. What are you up to? Oh, I couldn't get out tonight, so I thought I'd ruin the moment by proxy. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Let's shake, let's shake that off, shall we? Let's go back in our minds to 1928. They didn't have cell phones in 1928. I'm sure they had something for ruining moments. Bugles, maybe? I don't know. Happy wedding time. So the scene shifts and we find the glamorous Janet Vandegraaff entertaining questions from reporters as she lounges by the pool. I met on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. He amused me with stories of his father's oil interests. We spooned, oh. briefly, oh. and then he proposed. Oh. So you won't be returning to the stage, ever? I you shan't. shan't. You shan't. I you shan't. shan't. Can we put you on that? Of, of course. course. One more question. Yes. Why in the world would anyone put olives in a Gibson? I got a question. Why give up the footlights when you got grease paint in your veins? Victor, please. Come on, Janet. Dump the mug and stay in the follies. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll, oh, fine. I'll put your name over mine on the marquee. <gasps> oh, Victor, if you think this is about vanity, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't want to show off no more. I don't want to sing tunes no more I don't want to ride moons no more I don't want to show off I don't want to wear this no more Play the saucy Swiss Miss no more Blow my signature no more I don't want to show off Janet, please! Don't try to control me I made up my mind And that's it I quit I'm leaving it all behind I don't want to be cute no more Make the gentleman hoot no more I don't want to wear fruit no more I don't want to show off She don't want to show off She don't want to show off. I don't want to show off. She don't want to show off no more. Off no more. Not me.
please, no more attention. I'm counting to ten. And I'm through. Farewell. I do. Farewell. You'll never see this. You'll never see this. Never see this. obvious that Miss Vandergraaf has no desire to return to the life on stage. Can't you see? It's killing her soul. Boys, this isn't over yet. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't do an encore. I don't want to encore no more. Keep them shouting for more no more. Hear the audience roar no more. I don't want to show Oh. That was Jane Roberts as the bride. She was the oops girl. Remember? Don't you people read? She was billed as the girl whose sexual energy was so great that it caused men around her to have accidents. Spill their drinks, drive their cars into trees, and she'd go, oops. I'm not really doing it justice, but people ate it up. She had a whole series of films. Oops, girl. Oops. Oops, girl, come home. Oh, and Oops, girl, let's see. Which won an Oscar for special effects. Well, begging and groveling didn't work. So it's time for plan B. And for that, I'll need an accomplice. Someone gullible with loose morals. I'll need a, a what do you call them? A, uh, Ah, a European. La, 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 la. In walks Adolfo, self-proclaimed ladies' man. Adolfo was played by former silent film star and world-class alcoholic Roman Bartelli. He was the one who later drank himself to de death at a chateau in Nice. Remember? It was five days before they found the body, and by then, it was partially consumed by his poodles. Only partially. I'm sorry, but I don't believe we've met. I am Adolfo. You are Adolfo? Yes, I am Adolfo. Not the Adolfo. Yes, I am Adolfo. Well, that's funny. You don't look like a scoundrel. Yes, uh, what? Just now, the groom, he was just here, and he said Adolfo looks like a scoundrel. Adolfo scoundrel? Those very words. Adolfo scoundrel? <laughs> it's like I'm hearing it again. This is outrageous. He sings this to the peoples? To the beautiful ladies with breasts for making love? <laughs> Why, I must, I must. You must take matters into your own hands. Yes. 
I must take us his groom into my hands and kill him! Yes! No! Don't kill him. Just hurt him enough so he can't get married. Yes, very, very good. Wait, what? What kind of a man is this groom? A big man? Well, a burly fellow. Well, he's big in the outside. No, no, no. Adolfo no fight big men. Just small, pale, wheezy little dwarf people that Adolfo can find far away. But no big man. So you're a lover, not a fighter. Yes, Adolfo's a lover of beautiful ladies. Some call me the king of romance. <laughs> well, you know what they say. The best way to get revenge on a man is through his... No! No. The best way to get revenge on a man is through his... Window! No. Best way, revenge on a man. Through. Through his. Through his. There is no other ways. I'm not Santa Claus coming down the chimney. <laughs> through his woman. Ah, his woman. Yes, his woman. His woman. Yes, his bride. Yes, Adolf will make love to the bride. That will show people that Adolf was no scoundrel. Okay. Show me to this bride. Wait! What? What kind of a woman is this bride? <laughs> a big woman? No. A burly woman? She's the cat's pajama. Pajama? She's a good looking woman! Ah, Jess, show me to this cat in pajamas. Adolfo will make her pair. Okay. <laughs> okay, Adolfo. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Ah, uh, Roman Bartelli chewing the scenery. You couldn't get away with a performance like that nowadays. You see, we as a society have grown too sophisticated for broad racial stereotypes on the stage. So we banished them to Disney. <laughs> Let the children sort it out. <laughs> have been kind enough to provide the liquor for the part. But we have to be discreet. Yes, madam. It is prohibition after all. I'm aware of that, madam. We'll have to use code words. For instance, if someone asks for a glass of ice water, it really means that they want a glass of vodka. Shh, 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 shh. Have you got that? Yes, madam. Sure. Maybe you should go and write it down. I understand, madam. A glass of ice water is a glass of vodka. Oh, oh. What's a glass of ice water? Vodka. Oh, oh, oh. Ice water? Vodka. <laughs> ice! Vodka! Yes! <laughs> Madam. <laughs> Underling, might I please have a glass of ice water? I found our meeting with the pastry chefs rather trying, and I would enjoy a glass of refreshing ice water. I hate this scene. <laughs> Your ice water, madam. Oh, thank you, Underling. Oh, that was pure vodka, you poop! You can see where this is going, can't you? Well, now I do need a glass of ice water! A glass of ice water, madam. Yes! Ice water! Are you going deaf? With that, I were. It's a series of spit takes. Oh. Your oh. ice water, Thank madam. Thank you, underling. Oh. 
Some elements of the drowsy chaperone were quite progressive. Oh. Some elements. <laughs> Your oh. ice water, Thank madam. Thank you, underling. <gasps> that was pure vodka, you poop! Some elements were quite progressive, yet others were stale in 1928. I'm going to skip ahead here. Find some lime juice, madam. Lime juice? For heaven's sakes, why? I'm going to wring out my eyebrows and make myself a gimlet. <laughs> now you're probably asking yourself, why was that routine in the show? Well, it's simple. There's a number coming up and they needed something to allow for the set change. It's mechanics. Robert Martin. Oh, my head is spinning. Yes, life is a mad whirlwind. This scene is particularly interesting. This is the only time where Jane Roberts and Beatrice Stockwell are alone together on stage. Now, Jane Roberts was an emerging star, but Beatrice Stockwell was already well established and a force to contend with. Anyway. I'm so full of apprehension, but I suppose that's normal, considering the circumstances. Have you ever been married, chaperone? God, no. I drink for pleasure, not out of necessity. One moment, Mrs. Tottendale. Your ice water. I'm afraid we're fresh out of olives. For heaven's sake, underling, why are you sopping wet? Because I was born into poverty. Have you ever been married, underling? Heavens no, madam. If I were to serve a woman, I would prefer to be paid for my efforts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too. I know it seems crazy to give up a successful career to marry a man I hardly know, but somehow, for some reason, when I look into his eyes, his big monkey eyes, Archie, I get all woozy. And that's love, isn't it? Be caused by a number of issues. I mean, I'm woozy right now, and I'm certainly not in love. Now, Beatrice Stockwell was famous for her arousing anthems. She entertained and inspired troops in every single major world conflict, up to and including the Falklands War. But by then, she was 80, and her anthems didn't much rouse as stupefy. Still, she demanded a rousing anthem in every single show she ever did. You couldn't say no to her. That's star power. Really, you're not being the least bit helpful. Couldn't you at least allay my fears with a few choice words of inspiration? Inspiration? Really, dear, that's not my forte. Yes, but if you... As we stumble along on life's funny journey Stumble along into the blue. We look here and we look there, seeking answers anywhere. Never sure of where to turn or what to do. Still we fumble our way through life's crazy. From right, no right from wrong, and the best that we can do is hope a bluebird will sing his song as we stumble along. Well, that 
that was quite nice chaperone, but I don't see how it pertains to my situation. Well, let me explain. Oh, really, that's not necessary. I suppose I was just looking for a sympathetic. It's a dismal little world in which we live. It can bore you till you have nothing left to give. Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seas, six excruciating continents, Antarctica. Oh, please. Antarctica, oh, please. Still, you mustn't let it lick you, this planet, oh, so glad. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your hand. As we stumble along, cross life's crowded dance floors. As we push and we shove, we live and we learn. And when we finally leave the bar, She basically sings a rousing anthem about alcoholism. <laughs> and that's what I really love about her. She just does her own thing, regardless of the needs or concerns of others around her. My mother was like that. <laughs> well, that was quite inspiring, Chaperone, but I'm still conflicted. Please, just tell me, is Robert the man for me? That, my dear, is something you'll have to decide for yourself. But I just don't know if he loves me. Just ask him. Roger, do you love me? It's Robert. And <laughs> I'm not allowed to see him. In fact, it's your job to keep me away from him. That's right. It is, and I take my job very seriously. However, at this moment, I'm just the teensiest bit drowsy, so I'm just gonna lie down. But whatever you do, do not go wandering through the garden seeking out your fiance to ask him a question on which your future happiness depends. Oh, thank you, chaperone. I just have to know if he loves me. <laughs> oh, what a skinny little fool. Still, I envy her. When will love come crashing through my door? La, 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 la. In walks Adelpho, come, come to seduce the bride. I am Adelpho. Try not to think of the poodles while you're listening to this part. <laughs> I am Adelpho and you are bride. No, I am not. What? But this is the bridal suite. And you are the only one here, therefore you must be bride. Interesting argument, but I'm afraid you are a moron. What? Me. No. Bride. Perhaps I can uh, take a message. Ah, yes, very, very good. Dear Van de Graaf Bride, I must make love to you. 
and transport you to a place of ecstasy. Sooner is better, signed Aldalfo, king of romance. Ha, it seems you've seen through my little ruse, it seems you've found me out. So you are the bride. Apparently so. Take me a doll face. No, no, no. Not a doll face, a doll foe. You must remember my name for when we are making love and you are screaming. You must say the right name or it will spoil everything. How can I make you remember? I'm sure that you have heard the name Adolfo, a ladies man who wins a claim Adolfo. Well, lovely miss, I am the same Adolfo. I introduce myself, I am Adolfo. Nice to meet you, shall we? Not so fast, so just in case you didn't hear Adolfo, I'll try to make it very clear Adolfo. All the lovely ladies cheer Adolfo, and I repeat myself, I am Adolfo. Understood. I can sing it high, Adolfo. I can sing it low, Adolfo. I can sing it very fast, Adolfo. I can sing it very slowly. I do it now. But it will take hours! Now let me see if you can remember my name! I'll give it a shot. So who's the fellow that you see? Adolfo. And how should you refer to me? Adolfo. And who is it I'll always be? Adolfo. Now sing it proudly. You are Adolfo. Now let me spell it out for you. For all you lovely ladies who didn't hear for some reason, because maybe you are uh, hard of hearing or something. <laughs> I don't know. It goes. That was my mother's favorite number in the show. I think it was her secret fantasy to be swept off her feet by a Latin lover. And I mean a real Latin lover, not a buffoon. But that's what musicals are all about, romantic fantasy. Falling in love at the drop of a hat, spontaneous tan going. Suddenly finding yourself in an insanely romantic setting, such as Mrs. Tottingdale's garden. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm an act and waiting to oh happen. La da 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 La da 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 Robert, look out! Oh. Don't worry, madam. It's my wedding day, so I have to wear a blindfold. A blindfold? Say, who am I speaking to anyhow? Why, it's me. I mean, Mimi. Mimi from France. This scene couldn't be more ridiculous. So you are marrying Janet Van de Graaff, no? Oui. I hear she's very beautiful. Oui. And glamorous. Ah, oui, oui. Is it true that she has an exceptionally broad range and excels at playing both comedic and dramatic roles? Uh, say, which part of France did you say you were from? Uh, uh the middle part, where they make the, uh, toast. 
So, you were telling me about your, how do you say it in English, fiancé? That's right. So, when was the moment when you knew that she was the only one for you? Well, it's a funny story, actually. We were standing on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. Yes? I was amusing her with stories of my father's oil interests. And then what happened? And then I was staring into her eyes, her glamorous eyes, and I felt all woozy. Oh, and then uh, you fell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right in my keister. And, uh, and then I said, well, I guess I don't have my sea legs yet. But we haven't left the dock. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> and that's when I knew it must be love. <laughs> and then you said? There was a time I could stop on a dime. Forbearance was one of my talents, but since you've been around, I can't hold my ground. I'm consistently losing my balance. I'm an accident waiting to happen. I'm a mishap about to ensue. I'm the toy on the stairs, the three-legged chair, the hem that's been caught by a shoe. When my two lovesick arms started flapping, there was nothing my ankles could do. I'm an accident waiting to happen. So how be I happen to you? And then what happened? And then we, we joined in. When men say I'm sweet and they fall at my feet, my heart doesn't beat any faster But when you lose control It touches my soul So I'm bracing myself for disaster You're an accident waiting to happen A catastrophe destined to be I'm the rags in the cellar A broken umbrella A, a branch hanging loose from a tree I can see myself jumping and clapping For a man who lives dangerously I'm an accident waiting to happen So hurry and happen to me And then what happened? Well, then we kissed I'm an accident waiting to happen So hurry and happen to me Wait a minute! You just kissed a strange French woman on your wedding day! What, what have I done? Oh no! Looks like a fake French accent and a blindfold have led to a terrible misunderstanding. Will it all work out in the end? Of course it will. It's not real life, it's a musical. In real life, nothing ever works out, and only the people who break into song are the hopelessly deranged. Mr. Feltic! Where is the philandering foreigner? Mr. Feltic! How long does it take to seduce one bride? Mr. Feltic, you don't need Janet no more! Oh, really? Yeah! I've been working in a mind reading act, presenting Kitty the Incomprehensible. <laughs> now think of something! Oh, I'm thinking of something, all wait, right. Wait, wait, wait. I got it, I got it. Kitty! Pick up some milk. And a loaf of rye bread. You're reading your own mind, you idiot. <laughs> oh, no one is so easy. <laughs> Mr. Feltzik, it would seem that the wedding is proceeding according to schedule. Yeah, my partners and I just finished frosting the last year of the cake. We applied the, um, uh, the, the fondant and the, um, the little pink rosettes. Boys, I need more time. Can't you ice another tear or something? There are no tears left. Save the ones that will soon be emanating out of your eyeballs. Now it's time for your just desserts. What do you say, partners? 
Should we whip up something special for Mr. Feltzik? Yeah. yeah. How about a Toledo surprise? <laughs> An inspired choice. A Toledo surprise? I never heard of that. No, you haven't. Most people have heard of it are generally never heard from again. <laughs> we'll share the recipe with you. First, you chop the nuts. Then, you pound the dough. Then you bake it up. Nice, nice and slow. slow. Then, then you, you got, got a Toledo. Toledo, Toledo surprise. surprise. Uh, Toledo surprise, interesting. Can I have the recipe again? It's a very simple <laughs> recipe, Mr. Felzik. First, you chop the nuts. Then you pound the dough. Then you bake it up. Nice and slow. Then you got a Toledo. Toledo surprise. Say, why don't we give him a taste, boys? Yeah. yeah. Hold it. What style? What rhythm? What grace? I got an idea. Open your fists. Yeah. Now shake them. And give me that recipe one more time. Da 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 da. Chop the nuts, pound the dough, bake it up, front, nice and slow. Then you got a Toledo, Toledo surprise. Now sell it. Hit the peach, peel the skin, mush it up, throw it in. That's a tasty Toledo, Toledo surprise. Now you're cooking. First you beat it up, then you sweet it up. When you heat it up, if it tries to rise, don't let it, it's a snap. Try it, folks. Whip your whites, split your yolks. That's a tasty Splendido. Toledo surprise. Hey, you boys are naturals. I'll go right up the contract. Hey! hey. I'm five, six, seven, eight. I'm putting on a new act with the pastry chef. Toledo surprise. You're putting gangsters in the show and you put me in it? They're not even the union. Kitty, oh. you got it all wrong. This show is for you and these are your backup dancers. Go take them for a spin. Backup dancers? Holy cats! Let the hot Selena dance to my libido. Good, yes, and neato. Sugary, yum, yum. Wedding is up! <gasps> what? For the love of God, why? Adalfo has made love to the bride. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the bride, you idiot! <laughs> That's the chaperone! What? The wedding is on! The wedding is off! What? <gasps> Robert kissed a French girl. Her name is Mimi. She's very beautiful. It wasn't my fault, Janet. She was just like you. Only French. Holy <laughs> mother of pearl! Yes, madam. What is all the commotion about? Uh, the wedding, madam. A wedding? Oh, I love weddings. Well, it's off. Oh, how terrible. Yes, what a wonderful, wonderful tragedy! Clear the floor, boys. I'll show you how it's done. What? First, you beat it up. Holy cats, is it about it? it up. Is he serious? Then you yeah, heat it up. When it tries to rise, don't let it. Toledo surprise. <gasps> surprise? Wait until, until it's ready. ready. Surprise? Wait until it's ready. Surprise? Wait until it's ready. Now it's looking ready. Surprise! Got it! Makes me twitch, makes me shake. This dessert takes the cake. Hits me like a torpedo. Toledo surprise. Toledo surprise. 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 surprise.
tune is so infectious. Oh, Robert, this is the saddest day of my life. Wedding bells won't ring, wedding bells won't chime. They will never celebrate our happy wedding the real Morosco Theater in New York City, it'd be time for intermission. So go ahead, go get your snacks. I'll be here when you get there. I hate intermissions. <laughs> they ruin the magic, you know. They yank you back into reality. One minute you're surrounded by music and glamour, and then BAM! You're surrounded by tourists, crinkling candy wrappers, and then nattering about the lack of women's restrooms. It's cruel. Oh, it's a power bar. I have like kind of like a blood sugar issue. I have to eat small meals all day or I get a little jittery. You wouldn't like the alternative, believe me. I remember my wedding day. I didn't eat breakfast and the ceremony wasn't until four. Can you believe I was married? I know. Well, there you go. You shouldn't go making assumptions about people. I'll have you know I'm a very complicated person. I have to go pee. But in the meantime, you can listen to the beginning of act two.
can really not see eye to eye. But Emperor, sometimes different outlooks can change your point of view. What? Precisely. What? Is it about the Asians that fascinate Caucasians? What is it about the Asians that's so nice? Is it the wontons, the egg rolls, the rice? Perhaps it's Buddha or Confucius and their excellent advice. What is it about Caucasians that mystifies we Asians? What is it about Caucasians that's so odd? They call a pretty lady abroad. They have hair upon their chest, and they only have one god. Impossible! I am so terribly sorry. <sighs> that was not from the drowsy chaperone. <laughs> I'm so terribly sorry. I have a woman who comes in once a month. Can you even say that? I have a woman. Anyway, she cleans the things that I absolutely refuse to clean. She's very good, but she has an annoying habit of putting my records away in the wrong place, even though I say to her, no touch records, Carmela, no touch records. I suppose if I spoke to her in complete sentences, she'd stop touching my records. <laughs> anyway, that was the beginning of act two to a different Gable and Stein show called The Enchanted Nightingale. Very racist, I know. But it had some lovely tunes. Act two of The Drowsy Chaperone begins with this. A haunting lament from a depressed bride. She sings it bathed in the pale blue light of a sympathetic moon, which is ridiculous because it's the middle of the day. Anyway, when you're listening to this part, try to ignore the lyrics. I know it'll be hard, but block them out. They're really not the best. Oh, although the tune is beautiful, and it truly communicates the bride's state of mind. Just please ignore the lyrics. I put a monkey on a pedestal and tried to make that monkey stay. And he did for a time, but he needed to climb and with other monkeys play far away. I'm just gonna pour he myself left lemonade. Check it on that pedestal inside <clears throat> his. Tiny frosty cock, and I haven't got the strength to pick them up. Oh, monkey, 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 you broke my heart in two, but I'll always save that pedestal for you. Come, my little. is so beautiful it just floats on air and I do admit I get a little misty-eyed whenever I think of that tiny jacket lying on that pedestal its long sleeves dangling on the floor oh monkey 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 you broke my heart in two but I'll always save that pedestal pedestal My little monkey, come, my little monkey, do. All right, now here it comes. Wait. Who are you? I'm Janet Van de Graaff. Do you need anyone? I don't need anyone. What about the love of one man? Well, I care about the love of one man when I am adored by millions. Do I need to be so gloomy? No, no, no. I could fool the world, so I chose. Sing the poisons, flowers to me every show. Gertrude Stein, she headed me alone. Now she really wants to go. Janet, Janet Vandergraaf. Ain't no nail that I can hammer. Or I give up a life of glamour. Life of glamour. Life of glamour. No. I monkey, love this party! Monkey! Monkey! monkey. 
monkey, monkey, monkey. I'm an accident waiting to happen. Monkey, hide. monkey, monkey. I don't want to show off no more. Monkey, monkey. I don't want to spread mirth no more. Monkey, monkey. Be the greatest on earth no more. I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to. I want to. I don't. I do. I don't. I do. I don't want to show off. Wasn't that lovely? I know. That number has a little bit of everything. A little Bubsy Berkeley, a little Jane Goodall. And that's another thing I love about musicals. When a character's in crisis, they sing and they dance. We're just so much better than just whining about it. You see? This is what I'm talking about. You manage to be happy for five seconds, and then something starts ringing! Oh, what a beautiful day for a wedding, aw. Oh. Shall I remove the pews now, or would you prefer I wait until morning? I'm just gonna stop this record here, right here, because I don't want it ruined by another ringing telephone. Here we have two vaudeville performers who have slipped through the cracks of time. You have Ukulele Lil and Eugene Fitzpatrick. I suppose Ukulele Lil played the ukulele, although she doesn't in this show. You know, I tried to find out more about them. I tried all my books and even searched the internet, but all my searches ended with Tiny Tim's autopsy photographs. Anyway, they're both lovely. Why would you have the pews removed? The bride has called off the wedding, madam. Oh, Anderling, never listen to a bride on her wedding day. Oh. Yes, madam. Anderling, you see, love is a very complex emotion. For example, you could be very close to someone one minute, but then the next... Why, you just want to strangle them! <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with the urge to strangle. Oh, you see? That's just the nature of love. Love makes lovers worry. Love makes lovers fret. But here's a fact on which we can depend. Just like love going wrong, you love Juliet. Oh, love is always love in the end. But... Romeo and Juliet was a tragedy, madam. Oh, I never read reviews! <laughs> love can start a quarrel. But love has always been a trusty friend. Twas a happy fate for Hank the Eight and Anne Boleyn. Oh, love is always lovely at the end. <sighs> Might I remind you that Anne Boleyn lost her head? Love was good to Eve, 
and Adam. Oh, here we go again. And Samson and Delilah, too. Good grief. May I pose a question to you, madam? Oh, why, yes, of course. Why does nothing I say to you ever get through? Don't mind if I do. Well, I found that quite taxing, madam. I might have to pour myself a glass of ice water. <laughs> love sneaks up behind you, love drops from above, but love would never consciously offend. Love has certainly been kind to me, and my true love Love is always lovely. But your late husband was a brute. I don't mean him, you coot. Love is always lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love, love is, is always, always lovely, lovely in the end. end. <laughs> love is always lovely in the end. Yes, yes, that was lovely. But to be frank, that number pisses me off. Now, I'm going to say something here. And yes, I have been drinking. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that love is not always lovely in the end. Usually, in the end, there are lawyers. And another thing. Surely someone was aware of the awkward sexual connotation of that title. Love is always lovely in the end. <sighs> is it just me? What I'm trying to say is that number is irresponsible and naively so. Sorry, I just had to say that for the benefit of the young people in the room. Oh, there's a part coming up that I'm absolutely obsessed with. But I'll try not to interrupt anymore. There you are. Oh, chaperone, I'm in a terrible state. Yes, you are. You can't go to the wedding looking like that. Oh, you poor dear. Haven't you heard? The wedding's called off. Oh, not your wedding, dear. Mine. That reminds me, might I borrow your veil? Uh, you're getting married? But to whom? La, 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 la. You're marrying Adolfo? I know it seems crazy, but when I look into his eyes, his big clumsy eyes, I get all, well, drowsy. And that's love, isn't it? Help me. There you are. Look, I'm going to put my cards on the table. I've got a weak heart, and I can't take the pressure. So tell me, is there going to be a wedding or not? Yes. Thank the good Lord in heaven. Adolfo and the chaperone are getting married. Wait, what? There you are! Oh, I have wonderful news. There's going to be a wedding. We know. You know? Yes, we just heard. But who told you? I did. But how did you know? What difference does it make? Mrs. Tottenhill and I are to be married in the garden at 7.30 this evening. What? What? <laughs> oh, yes. <sighs> Congratulations to everyone. Say, what kind of cockamamie wedding is this? Everyone's getting married except for the bride and groom. <sighs> oh, there you are. Oh, Janet, I've been looking for you everywhere. Hello, Mr. Martin. Please don't be that way. Can't you find in your heart to marry me? George has gone through all this trouble and, well, I do love you. 
More than I can say. But you kissed another woman. Yes. And I just can't understand it. I know this may sound ridiculous, but when I was kissing that French girl, it was just like kissing you. Oh, Robert, you were kissing me. You mean you're Mimi? Well, that uh, French accent was remarkably accurate. Why, thank you. I developed it when I played the role of Monique in Hold That Baguette. There you are! Now remember, no matter how well you play the part of happy wife, you'll never get a standing ovation. Oh, I just don't know. Oh, I'm so confused. Chaperone, please, I beg you, just this once, give me some advice that is coherent and appropriate to the situation. Should I marry Robert? All right, now here it comes. Not only the culmination of the plot, but also a moment that I've become obsessed with and has brought me back to this record again and again. Here it comes. Well, dear, my advice to you is... All right, get ready. This is it. Do all you can. Did you catch that? You couldn't tell what she says because someone drops a cane. I'll play it for you again. Do all you can. Is she saying live while you can or leave while you can? I'll play it for you one more time. Do all you can. I mean, it's Beatrice Stockwell, so it might just be another cynical quip. But that's exactly what you're thinking when you're standing up at the altar, isn't it? Live or leave? And you have to live, right? I mean, you have to live because you do love her in some way. I mean, it's not an exact science. An arrow doesn't come out of the sky and point to the one you're supposed to be with. So, one day you, you say to someone, you say, I love you. <laughs> but you phrase it as a question, but they interpret it as fact. And then suddenly, there she is in a $3,000 dress with tears in her eyes and her nephew made the chuppah. And for a couple of months, you stare at that alien lump playing beside you in bed, and you think to yourself, who are you? Who are you? And then you say it aloud. Then it's trial separation, then it's couples counseling, then all your conversations are reduced to your Zoloft addiction and her eating disorder, and you're constantly redefining Re-evaluating and revisiting before you finally lose the deposit on your house and the whole relationship boils down to your only copy of Gypsy spinning through the air and smashing against the wall. <sighs> but in a larger sense, in a broader sense, it's better to have lived than left, right? Am I right? Yep. Do all you can. You have no idea how many times I've listened to that. Well, chaperone, you certainly have a way with words. Robert, my answer is yes. I will marry you. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Mr. Feltzik, looks like this wedding's a done deal now. You're in trouble. And there's nothing you can do about it. Ha, ah, but there is! I've got a replacement! Introducing Kitty the Incredible! Exciting. Okay, Kitty. Now show them you can read my mind. My mind! Kitty! Well, you... Marry me. Holy cats! The velvet! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Isn't she great? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, 
Why don't you ladies go put on your frillies and we'll all get married in one big clump. That's how they do it in Utah. George, I don't know how you've done it. Four weddings in one day? I guess you're everybody's best man now. I am? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! He's George, that's George, the best man, George. I'm honored to be doing what a best man ought. He's basking in the glory of a fight well fought. Wedding bells will ring, hey. wedding bells will chime. Hey. Wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. Wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding. Minister, you may begin. Oh no. I forgot the minister. Who the hell are you? I'm Trix, the aviatrix, queen of the sky to Rio. I was wondering when my engine needed mending. I'll fix my navigatrix, and then I'll fly and let you lovebirds tie the knot. So sorry to crash the party, folks, but we'll have this fixed up in two shakes, and then off to Rio for carnival. Wait. The captain of a ship can perform a marriage? Yes. yes! And a pilot is comparable to a captain? Yes. yes! And an aeroplane is a kind of a jeep! A jeep of the air! Some call it an air jeep! Oh, oh shit. shit! Yes! Wait, Trix, I have a great idea. You can get them married on the plane and we'll all have the honeymoon in Rio! Yay! Yay! may bring a tear to the eye but what a thrill when lovers trill I do I do in the sky when vows are said in when a vows are said in a That's so we refrain. I do, I do in the sky. All right, everybody stay calm. It's a horrible old apartment with terrible wiring. I'll find the fuse box, just don't worry. Don't let yourselves be distracted. Don't talk to anyone. I'll find the fuse box, just don't worry, please. Is the soup there? Oh, God. Your lights are out. Yeah. Yeah, we had to shut the power off because we're placing the breaker panels in the basement. Oh. 
So we replaced it, but while we were replacing the breaker panels, the power turned off in all of the apartments. Yeah. And that's what happens. It's normal. I know. So I'm here to reset your breakers. Right now? It'll only take a second. Fine, come on. Because I tried calling you earlier, but there was no answer. Yeah, well, I've been having a problem with the phone. <laughs> oh, here we go. What was that? Music, you know. What kind of music? You know, like a musical or whatever. You, know, <laughs> you like musicals? No. Well, I love musicals. I go with my husband all the time. It's amazing what they can do in the shows nowadays. Have you seen Miss Saigon? They learned it I want Captain on the stage in that one. I've seen it Well, that's very Catholic. interesting, but goodbye. <sighs> Hope she's all right. <laughs> no, I don't. <sighs> <laughs> Collect myself. All right. One moment before the end of the show, and the mood is completely broken, completely obliterated. Maybe I should just start it over from the beginning, you know? <sighs> it's so frustrating, you have to understand. I love this show. And I've never even seen it. My mother gave this to me right My father left us. He didn't leave because of the record. Although, I'm sure it didn't help matters. <laughs> Look, what, what I'm trying to say is that this number is irresponsible. What? <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that this musical means everything to me. And I know it's not perfect. The spit take scene is lame and the monkey motif is labored. But it does what a musical is supposed to do. It takes you to another world and it gives you a little tune to carry in your head through life's dreary horrors. A little something for when you're feeling blue. As we stumble along on life's funny journey. As we stumble along into the blue. We look here and we look there, seeking answers anywhere, never sure of where to turn or what to do. I'm an do. accident to happen. Still we bumble our way. I don't want to sing tunes through life's crazy Wedding land. bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. To lead us around.
Goodbye, everybody. Wait, wait. It's on. Is this on? Good evening, everyone. So, Hello? Hello? I want to make it louder. Okay, so first, we would like to thank Ashley and Melissa, who did everybody's makeup on stage. Where are you, bestie? Okay. <laughs> okay, so next we want to say a huge thank you to Abby, Michelle, and Kelsey for all their amazing work for the uh, <laughs> with the <laughs> for costumes and props. And you, gir <laughs> you girls are just overall such sweet people and help us with any little thing we needed backstage. You guys are just so sweet, and we love you. Um, yeah, very. Uh, next, we want to thank the two guys who, with the help of Stage Crew, built this amazing set that you guys can see behind us. And on top of that, built the plane that I came in on that I broke on the first night, which I'm so sorry for that, by the way. Um, but Stork and Chisholm, you guys are the best. And every year, every year you show how much dedication and support. They're back there. Chisholm's back there. Come! show your dedication and support every year and we're so thankful for you guys so thank you so much okay oh oh no oh. all right hi so the next person
and we would like to thank, has been here every single day, has helped us through every single, at, like, every single rehearsal, is here every hour. She is the most amazing dance captain in the entire world. Jordan Pollock, please come down here. <laughs> She's such a kind person, such an amazing friend, and I'm so honored to give you this. <laughs> Okay, hi. Next up, we have our assistant director, Maddie Miss. Where are you? <laughs> Maddie was there. Maddie was there at every single rehearsal. She gave us notes. She took notes every single rehearsal. Tell us what we did wrong, what we really sucked at, what we did really well. She told us everything. So, Maddie, we love you, and we don't know what we could have done without you for this show. Uh, next, we want to thank Caroline. <laughs> Caroline was our assistant stage manager, and this show would not have been half what it was without her here. She was always here, making things a little less overwhelming for all of us. She was, did whatever we needed her to do. She was whatever we needed her to be at the time. And if I didn't have Caroline holding my hand through this, I never would have made it through. I love you. All right, it's me. You stay. So, um, as much as Talia doesn't want to believe it, she does more for us than anybody ever has these past three years, and we can never thank her enough. I mean, it is such a pleasure to work with her. She does so much for us, and she won't admit it, and we probably give her way too much, but she never says no, and we just want to thank you so much. It's an honor for you to be with us. Thank you. All right, so our next gift goes not only to the woman who gave us all these awesome costumes, but to someone who's also became like our second mother, who we oh. talk to for everything. So, Mrs. Calio. Mom. Thank you. Mom. 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 Thank you for always being there. These costumes were a hassle. This hoop skirt ripped like 11 times a night, so I appreciate it. My pants ripped today. <laughs> Don't try to stretch while in costume, not worth it. <laughs> Next, we'd like to thank the amazing Mrs. Lovetig. I've had the honor of working with her as our vocal director for five years and as my chorus teacher, but she's so much more than that. <laughs> she has this amazing balance of not putting up with any of our nonsense, but <laughs> having the best sense of humor and laughing with us. Can I test it? <laughs> and she, she's the most and she always believes in me, even when I don't believe in myself, so thank you. All right, um, last but certainly not least, we want to thank our amazing director, Mr. Ardito. You can see him, he's right here, because he decided to do pit and directing at the same time. That's how cool he is. We, um, we don't know what we would have done without him. He is um, always there for us. He cares.